So, here we are. It's State of Play, August 6th. Waiting for the countdown to finish, seeing how it all goes. And I am in a low mood. My expectations are low, my feelings about this whole thing are low, The my, my mood for the afternoon is low. This is the right moment for disappointment. This is where I'm ripe to actually be plucked from my depression and put into happiness in some manner or form. And I'm not hoping that PlayStation State of Play is going to do it, because if anything has told us from the past that the PlayStation State of Play is mired in disappointment, it is a moment of expectations horribly unmet and desires crushed, <laughs> you know? So um, this has obviously been already pre-announced as being a st uh, State of Play for third-party PlayStation stuff. Uh, specifically to do with uh, PS4 and PSVR with an update, an update on things previously announced during uh, the PS5 conference, which didn't set my mind on fire whenever I saw it previously. So let's uh, vamp for about seven minutes thinking about what could actually be in here of interest. Um, I can't even remember what the big list was from the PlayStation... Uh, announcements. Let's see here. Um, oh, wow. That's right. Demon's Souls was one of the big announcements. Just taking a list here. I thought was it, what was actually in it. It was uh, Doom Eternal coming to PS5. Elder Scrolls Online, obviously. Valhalla. Yippee. Battlefield 6. Astro's Playroom. Bug snacks. So we're gonna get an update on bug snacks, I'm sure. Uh, chorus. No. This this appears to actually be a very large list of things that are actually going to be on both of them here. Um. What was? Because what ones were actually announced at the last Sony presentation? Hmm. Oh, we're about to start, is it? Well, show starts in five minutes. So we're actually, it's, this is the official time for it to start, but it's not starting for another five. Hey, Google, stop alarm. If you just asked to stop an alarm, there are actually none going off at the moment. Hey, Google, cancel alarm. Okay, canceled. There we go. There we go. Those are the ones that were actually announced. Spider-Man Miles Morales, Gran Turismo 7, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Project Athe Athea. That's the Square Enix one. I wouldn't mind. This is a third party. This is a third party presentation. And they're going to go back over stuff that was announced for the last one. Square Enix's Project Athea would be nice, but extremely unlikely. <laughs> it's like very unlikely that we're going to actually see anything. That was actually related to this. Uh, confirm my choices. Um, Stray, which I'd love to see more about. The uh, the cat and robots wander around. Sackboy's Big Adventure. Destruction All-Stars. Uh, Destruction All-Stars would actually be fun to hear more about because it's Destruction Derby with actual like Fortnite gameplay. And I'm actually all about that. I didn't mind. Uh, goodbye, Volcano High. Now, goodbye, Volcano High, whenever I got announced because it was all the furry creatures in the slow. I didn't think about one of my favorite movies of all goddamn time. Volcano High. If you haven't seen Volcano High, that is a movie I will need to talk about in a video someday. It was X-Men before X-Men, and I fucking loved it. So, actually, if we get the chance, we might go over that someday. But goodbye, Volcano High, the video game. An emotional kind of like uh, point-and-click adventure. I'd be up for, up for that. Oddworld Soulstorm obviously was announced, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, Jet the Far Shore, uh, we're going quickly over those, Ghostwire Tokyo caught people by surprise because Ghostwire Tokyo was thought to be like a Silent Hill esque game, ended up being a first person ghost hunting game, I could get behind that, um, Jet the Far Shore, we was shown so little of that we might actually see gameplay or something a little bit more detailed about it this time because last time it was very much a cutscene um, intro kind of thing that we didn't know much more about other than people leave a planet and then you colonize maybe? Hitman 3, Astro's Playroom, Little Devil Inside, which looks like a lot of fun. Um, I like the concept that it actually is like, 
if it's possibly what we think it is, where it's like the the battle of life inside an old man who <laughs> like you're you're essentially harvesting from inside the parts of the old man as he like uh, goes to the toilet, eats his meals, go throughout the day, and that's how each of the ventures done. That's that's what it appeared to be, but it could very much not be that. But would, I'd like to know more. A little devil inside has got my attention. Deathloop with the assassins trapped in eternal combat. Demon Souls, Resident Evil Village for Resident Evil Eight. Pragmata. Which looked weird because it was a very Death Stranding esque kind of like intro to it. Uh, Horizon Forbidden West. And then, of course, the two consoles themselves. So there's no hardware to be announced today. So, out of those games, what are we going to probably hear about? We're probably going to hear about Deathloop, probably Resident Evil, and Bug Snacks. That's a, I'm going to say, that's what I'm going to think. I'm going to think Deathloop was actually very much um, wanting to be shown. And. Uh, Bug Snacks seems to actually be one of those games that actually, like, it'll have perpetual announcements. It'll, it'll be a Viva Pinata style thing where they'll just keep dropping stuff about that because it'll be funny and weird and it'll look good for kids. Um, maybe what else will we see a little bit about? We might see, like, I, I wouldn't mind seeing more about Destruction All Stars, which feels like it should be a game that's probably on the PS4 and just happens to be coming out in the PS5 as well. And because of it being a third party game, I would like to see Project Athia. Project Athia is what I would really like to see, but it's very unlikely we're going to see anything about them. Be used to measure the shape of irregular items to create. <laughs> so of course, the, for some reason, just audio starts playing through from that article. Because no website can actually be just the article anymore. It has to have enough advertisements to choke a goddamn goat. So down the last two minutes, let's, let's, let's fade this out to actually be in the full screen so we can actually see this properly. Um, let me see, can I actually make this a little bit bigger for it to actually be a little bit more... Um, Full screen, full screen. Let's see here, game stream. Uh, capture card. No, not that capture card, that capture card. Cube it bigger, there we go. Hmm. That looks like it could work. That looks like it could work very well. So. Let's go. Okay, I can actually move my webcam on here as well because I don't need it to be quite so floaty anymore because I don't have the box around me. So I can actually close it off so it looks like I'm literally actually sitting in the corner here watching this along with you guys. Alright, there we go. Get the audio sitting in the right position. Let's look at the TV. So I'm looking to you to actually explain to me what the fuck's going on if anything interesting happened. I will have the chat there as well, but because I have my back kind of the way I'm sitting watching this, I'll have to look towards it to find out what you guys are saying. But... That'll do for now. That'll do, pig! That'll do. 53 seconds. Last minute. Everything at the last minute. Oh, I'll grab myself a brownie. There's still one sitting there in the box. Oh. Maybe I'll snack while I'm here. Just like Bugstock says, you are what you eat. I'm so ready to be disappointed. So ready to be disappointed. PlayStation 4 sound. Okay. Because last time they did this, they did the Final Fantasy 7. Blink! And you're like, wait! <laughs> it's a PlayStation 4 sound. Okay. Crash 4. It's about time. I'm Lou Stutter, producer of Toys for Bob. I'm here to talk to you about Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Alright, you know what? Actually, this actually looks like a decent Crash, Crash game. Worked. The devious villains, Neocortex and Dr. Entropy, finally escape their interdimensional prison, leaving an evil scientist-sized hole in the universe. Mm -hmm. Now they've got their eyes set on not only simply conquering this dimension, but all dimensions. And it's up to Crash and Coco to save the day. Crash Bandicoot 4 is about time is the first totally new game in the Crash Bandicoot series in over a decade. So for us at Toys for Bob, we felt that it was important to reintroduce longtime fans, as well as new players, to this amazing franchise. First, we made sure to incorporate the classic tense, precise, and perspective-shifting platforming that we all fell in love with. 
And then we wanted to introduce exciting new elements that we can't wait to show you today. Let's start with Insanity Beach. This is where Crash's adventure first started and where we picked things up again in Crash 4. But there have definitely been changes since we first saw Insanity right. Beach all those years ago. And throughout Crash 4, you'll see those changes to our gameplay and even our art style. Our art teams wanted to take inspiration from not just the original games, but the animated cartoons that inspired those original games, all while also delivering bigger, more awe-inspiring dimensions to explore. I like this. Throughout Crash 4, you'll see... Okay, playable! Vistas, ...new character models, and lots of expressive animations. And with all of that also comes new additions to the platforming, like having the ability to wall run, rope swing, rail grind, and zip line as well. In the original trilogy, specifically Crash okay. Warped, there were certain moments in the game where Crash would change outfits. Think Crash wearing a biker jacket when riding a motorcycle. That seemed like a natural area for us to expand upon. So we have loaded the game with tons of awesome skins <laughs> you can earn and wear throughout the game. All right. The skins are totally cosmetic and a fun way to... I, that's what I was curious if they were going to do it with Coco as well. Just to be Excellent. Clear, there's no MTX here. Skins are earned by completing different challenges. Good. Gems within the levels. That's the way you Crash do it. Crash 4 also introduces the Quantum Masks, the powerful protectors of time and space. Crash and Coco will need their assistance throughout the game to tackle the crazy challenges that we're going to be throwing at the player. Whether it's Ika Ika, who gives you the ability to instantly flip your center of gravity at the press of a button. Yes! Kapunawa, who allows you to slow down the world around you. Or Lonnie Loli, who allows you to face shift elements in and out of existence, bending the rules of reality and altering your environment with these new masks. Right. Okay. As, as three mechanics, that is actually. Oh god, that's. That's gonna have to wait for another day. Oh, that's gonna be so frustrating. <laughs> that's that not in your control. Isn't the only character you get to take control of during this adventure. Yeah, we for saw two groups. You can play the entire game as Coco. Yes. Any level that you can play as Crash, you can also play as Coco. All right. It's very important for us that she take a more prominent role in the story this time as well. But that's not all. We've got a few other characters that you'll get to control at key points in the adventure so that they can provide their own fresh perspectives and new gameplay. Here you can see that you'll be taking control of Neocortex. He's all about using his blaster to change an enemy in his path. In addition to playing as Cortex, we're excited to reveal that for the first time, you'll also get to tail slap your way through crates as Dingo Dial. I repeat, you get to play as Dingo Dial in Crash 4. And a lot has changed in the years since we last saw Dingo Dial. In fact, he hung up his old flamethrower rocket launcher combo when he decided to retire from a life of villainy and open a diner. Unfortunately okay. for Dingo, fortunately for us, his adventure begins by witnessing the destruction of said beloved diner and getting sucked into another dimension. Finally, there's one more surprise I'm incredibly excited to show you today. The Crash Bandicoot series has always been about finding new and exciting ways to play through the game. In the past, it's been about taking on time trials or discovering all the hidden secrets. Interesting. Well, for Crash 4, we wanted to bring something brand new to the table. So we teamed up with our friends at Beanox to create a brand new style of play for Crash 4 that we call Inverted Mode. It's our souped up, bump a berry fueled take on a mirror mode. Not only are perspective shifted, but now each of the dimensions are rendered in a new and unique art style that really changes the look and feel of the experience. Okay. One dimension could be asking you to traverse through a neon wasteland, while another tasks players with spinning paint all over the environment to see their path forward. We've even got one that feels like an old timey movie with the overcranked camera speed increasing the actual speed of gameplay as well. This is actually a yeah, smart like, like there's entire games that would be based around that concept. Totally new. Rather than actually being the multiple feudal levels, feature that is going expand to expand the gameplay. Player, especially the completionists out there. A reason yeah. to visit each level again to see what new and exciting That is actually real. That's, that's, like, that's a naturally smart way to extend so gameplay in, in a platform. Crash, crash, crash Bandicoot platform. Bandicoot 4 platform. is about time. That is Experience actually the smartest thing. Like, like, that's, so I'm, I'm, I'm not hyped about Crash because it was actually beyond my time. Um, my platformers were always like the earlier Mario stuff, but that is cool for anybody who is a Crash fan. Party updates for PS4 and PSVR, and some new PS5 gameplay too. We open the show with an all-new look at Crash 4. It's about time, coming to PlayStation 4 on October 2nd. Now let's keep the party going with the latest from IO Interactive. Uh, what are they going to do with uh, Hitman 3? Hitman 2 definitely didn't feel like Hitman 2. It felt like Hitman, the ongoing series. 
Great gameplay though. What do you expand though in Hitman? Besides, this is your big day. Wait. Clean ball. Have fun. Oh, don't worry about that. My art speaks for itself. Well, I have to go. I'll call you when I get back to you. Okay. I mean, this is such a natural extrapolation of a fucking Hitman game, though. This is actually really cool because it's like we, we wanted we wanted a game like this. I don't know if we wanted Hitman like this, but Murder Simulator first person. Oh no! Oh no! You have, you have the you actually take one hand of the two remotes and go hmm okay. <laughs> Struggling. You have the force feedback. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm I'm setting up. I'm setting up now. Like that's that's me kind of intrigued. VR mode for Hitman Three. Interesting. Is this? Is this what I think it is? Raid 2! It is! I thought he had fucking retired from the game industry out of, like, after all the bullshit that went along with it. Raid 2! Right! Okay! Fuck, I never finished the story of the first one. Yeah, we... At this point, I think people get what it is. <laughs> you can just show the title in the card now. This is a very elaborate fucking intro for it, though. What are they gonna do? What? 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 This is such an early announce. There's no. Is this actually ready? It is. And very little has changed. Are we doing like a? Is it Braid HD? Is it Braid Remaster? A Braid Anniversary Edition, okay. So it's still the same Braid, just done again. <laughs> yeah, there's the difference. That's what it is. Happy to announce Braid Anniversary Edition. It's the classic puzzle adventure where you manipulate time, hand repainted for modern high resolutions. Many areas have been re-envisioned to make them more unique. And it's even more like a living painting with brushstrokes animating the world. There are more than nine pixels for each pixel in the original game. There are new animations for smoother motion, improved sound and music to enhance the mood, and many hours of developer commentary and interviews on subjects like puzzle design, programming, and visual art. We plan to make it Interesting. the most detailed commentary in any game ever. So if you want to learn how video games are made, Braid Anniversary Edition will be a really good resource. We hope you'll enjoy the game when it comes out early next year. It is a teaching game. That's that's a, all right. That's a way to that's a way to revive Braid. Make it a game that you're actually going to get lecturers to go like, oh, just go and play Anniversary Edition, and we'll be talking about Chapter it's Six, which is matched up with Episode Seven. Mystical Island. Let's take a quick right. in this new footage captured from PS5. The Pathless. Hi everyone. This is Matt Nava from Giant Squid. I'm excited to share more with you today about our upcoming game, The Pathless. The Pathless is an open-world, mythic adventure game set in a vast forest. You play as the Hunter. The Hunter is a master of archery. She can shoot talismans to fill her dash meter, which allows her to bound across the landscape. Oh! Oh, that is going to be so satisfying! So the game's unique take on archery is all about timing, not aiming down sights. Mm -hmm. This design was critical to making it possible to shoot even while moving fast and performing acrobatic maneuvers. <laughs> you instantly feel as skilled as the hunter herself. The game is designed around traversal. Yes. Yes. It's a rhythm game, a rhythm platformer. With help from the eagle, you can even fly. The bond between the hunter and the eagle is central okay. in the pathless. Pathless, because you have no idea where the fuck you are going. 
You can gain altitude while you glide by flapping. I get it. Okay, I get it. Make sure you pet the eagle to keep it clean and in good flying condition. <laughs> can you pet the doggo? No, but can you pet the eagle? <laughs> you have to wipe him down. Aww. You'll find Aww. Him all over the island if you know where to look. <laughs> That's my favorite flying doggo. This is this is actually this is gorgeous, and I'm completely on board with the actual gameplay. Collecting crystals will let you upgrade the eagle's ability to flap. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. You will also discover larger puzzles to solve, like in ancient structures. Oh, this is so meditative. I would like. This is gonna be so chilled out, and meditative to play, but also frustrating if you can't figure out the puzzle entry. My god, I want this to just be Journey 2, essentially. <laughs> the Pathless is all about finding your own way forward. So unlike most open world games, there's no map. Instead, Dondra can use her mask to peer into the spirit world and discover distant landmarks. Two worlds. It even shows you where you've been. Right! Okay, Having very, higher vantage very points, Breath of the Wild either. there. Further with spirit vision. Lower Brez, Polly, you can actually see out in the distance. It's kind of like the, um... It's kind of like the way that the, uh, Giant Shadows of Mordor kind of works. The source of the darkness will pose a constant threat to you on your quest. Right. They will try to separate you from the eagle. What? Fuck you, darkness! Okay. Stay still in the light to avoid detection. You won't be able to take on the cursed spirits until you've returned light to the obelisks. Right. So once you actually have an area. Resolved. Meditate and bring that light, motherfucker. When the obelisks are restored, the cursed spirits will be vulnerable. Chase them down through the forest to corner them in a dramatic final battle. Oh! Okay, I am on board with this. They fucking run in battle straight through the forest as you keep on chasing after them. Right. Oh, so you chase them to get in front of them? This is so, so good. Shadows of the Colossus, see? I am on board! Oh. This looks like too much fun. Oh. I see you lose them for a while, I'll set you chase back after them. Okay, actual boss fights. Oh, these feel, this looks and feels like such a Zelda boss fight. The hunter and eagle will have to defeat the cursed spirits to bring life back to the world. I am all about this. This is a, this is actually really really cool. Such a simple basic premise. But uh, traversal, puzzle solving, dungeon completion. There's so much more to explore and discover. And then, um, the pathless is coming boss out fights. Here. Thanks for watching. Pathless, I am, on, I am on board for this. I see one big deer boss there, but I want to see variety. What other, what other big creatures can they have? Because that one deer boss looks interesting. But what else can you do? Where else do you go? Nice. That is going to be an interesting game to play. Next up, hey, Splunky! For Spelunky 2. God. Hi, my name is Derek Yu, and I'm the creator of Spelunky. Ow. 
For Splunky 2, I wanted to make sure we made something that got old fans excited and also brought in new players. Spelunky was big in Asia, yeah, man. There was a there was a full Spelunky online, Spelunky like such a unique experience in the first place. So oh fuck! People became fans of the game through their friends and family, and even strangers on the internet. That's one reason why we're adding online multiplayer, so that more people can play the game together. Yeah, or the fact that and you realize it okay, made you that so that much money whenever you did it online in Asia. To make sure that the game felt welcoming, even though it's difficult. In Spelunky 2, when you do runs and discover new characters, you'll also be building an in-game community and family. Ah. I designed the world of Spelunky 2 to feel much more rich and dynamic than Spelunky 1. It's going to feel a lot more full. Nice. Players will be able to explore and interact with it in lots of new ways. For example, you'll be able to ride turkeys, and find hidden passageways, and you'll have to choose between branching paths as you make your way deeper into the caves. As a result, the stories players create will have much more texture to them. Even after many, many hours of playing, I still have interesting runs that don't even go past the first area. <laughs> In Spelunky 1, <laughs> runs are centered around the shops and how you chose to interact with them. So in Spelunky 2, we've expanded the shopping experience and made them more nuanced and exciting. And also added new characters that can help you or hinder you. <laughs> Given how amazing the Spelunky community is, it's hard to say how long it will take to find the deepest secrets. But I think the great thing about Spelunky is that the deepest secrets are the ones that even I don't know about. And there are lots of new things to play with that I hope players can use to push past the boundaries of what we, as the developers, know about. <laughs> Hug gun! I have two types of favorite stories from Spelunky fans. First are when people are genuinely surprised by something that happened in the game. And second, the ones where people shared a fun experience with friends and family in multiplayer. These are the stories I wanted to expand upon in Spelunky 2. They're really what guided my design choices. After releasing Spelunky, I knew there was a lot more that could be done with the concept in the world. Knowing that possibility was out there is what's been exciting for me and the rest of the team. In a lot of ways, when Spelunky 2 comes out, I want players to experience what we experienced making it. That feeling that there's something special there waiting for you to discover. It just feels like Spelunky is like randomized bullshit at the video game, and I actually am completely on board with it. Not a not a game that I got massively into myself, but I did play the online of Spelunky Online for a little while on the PlayStation 3, maybe? Early days in the 4? I don't know. But I definitely played it on the, um... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that was just so, so much death. So much death. But yeah, Splunky too. Uh, I, I think there's gonna be a lot of people excited about that, not for personally for myself. We've got a bunch of new PS4 updates to share with you, starting with a closer look at Genshin Impact. Oh, this looks like my kind of bullshit. Heck, Otaku, see of the world. Hey, there's something strange over there. Come on, let's take a look. No! Did they literally just make a weeb? Waifu version of Breath of the Wild? They did! <laughs> I <summoned you. laughs> I'm sorry, but it is just weeb waifu fucking Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Please, make a pot and start cooking food. Big, it's a big, beautiful looking game. Is this MMO? Idea of death. If you cannot bring yourself to kill, speak my name. Is this a four player multiplayer thing? Wow, this is very action RPG. This is a very. This is actually fucking getting interesting. What the fuck? What is this?
Is it an action RPG single player? Or... I like this Parties of Three. This Autumn 2020 coming to PlayStation 4 worldwide. Sure, make your focus you just like take the focus away from what we're actually just looking at. Gods have screamed for my mercy. Who are you to stand in the way of my vengeance? The fuck is this? It's stylish? Whatever it is. Why does this give me icy vibes? If you haven't heard of icy, it's a Korean single-player like action combat game, platform combat game that um, I played a couple of years ago. Uh, there's a full playthrough of it on the channel. I would watch it. Like I just watch a cartoon of this. What the fuck is it? Oh, okay. Is this is this like a really m ultra modern Mega Man thing going on here, or because it's like a m weird mixture? It feels like I'm looking at like flashback in another world. Flashback in another world. Aeon, Eon, Aeon must die. Eon must die. Okay. Hmm. I'm intrigued by that. Oh fuck, is, is this... This is, I don't know what's going on, but the, I, Sony are holding my fucking attention today. There's too many weird and interesting games. 2.5D action platformer? Like this is like, what the fuck? This is like Blade Kitten? Blade, what? Well, Blade getting an icy just put together? What the? What? What? What is up with this? Actually, like, uh, like making games that are like. Like I'm just watching this. And it's like in my head, I'm looking icy, and then I'm thinking, oh, that um, steampunk one with the fucking girl with the robotic legs. Um, that was kind of like flashback. So I'm getting, I'm getting very flashback slash icy vibes. I know mutation. I this is it's that's time. three goddamn games so far. Like I just Check need to know more. Gameplay footage captured. Fucking bug snacks. I knew it was gonna come at some point. My invitation is open. Come join me on the island of bug snacks. Wow, that's your new lead. Another monster hunt. Elizabeth Megafig is a two-bit con artist. Don't tell me you actually believe this half-baked nonsense. I swear, if you chase this bug snack story, you're out of a job! You're the journalist! Mesbert said you'd be coming. There's a bug snack right over there. Do me a favor and take my snack track. Stranger, I could use your help. This bunger goes wild for ketchup. Use it to lead the bunger over yonder. I want you to use that journalistic instinct to find out what my favorite bug snack is. And feed it to me, Ops. How fun little sprout doing, Mrs. Papa? Oh, of course he does! Well, I have a few prototype traps that I could put to use. You're pretty good at stuff, and nobody hates you yet. You can catch bug snacks and bring everybody back to Snacksburg. Say you do find these bug snacks and make it back alive. You just might keep your job. Now get going and try not to fall off a cliff. <laughs> it's like it has this whole kind of like Viva Pinata kind of thing going on, and then it goes like. And darkness. Let's start <laughs> like, okay. Okay, you creepy bastards. I'm not too sure if I really want to be part of this. Ha! VR. He's wrong with you. <laughs> I 
<laughs> oh god. You must stop Vida. I don't understand why you never mentioned that you had the force. I mean, that's exactly the reason why VR was invented. Rump. <laughs> so to be so janky. Vader immortal. <laughs> Fair enough. Fuck it. Fuck it. He's gonna question it. Whatever you do, stay in the light. Control 2? I've been still meaning to play the first one of this. SCP turned into a video game. Right, so it's actually no, not, it's all, it's the second expansion for it. So still the same control. Okay. I saw the season pack for that, and I'm still interested in playing it. God damn it. I was looking at it there going, wait, what is this? And like, oh, okay. Um, fair play to them for not actually getting too overly excitable about this style of game with like a mad CGI trailer. There was obviously a CGI trailer there. This has been probably a mobile game for some time. And it's just making it onto the PlayStation at some point. Is, is this essentially like a uh, tower defense chess? Definitely feels like that. Yeah, don't explain anything. Don't don't bother. Auto chess. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, a symbol that shows it's a puzzle, trying to get from place to place, from sign to sign. I like the concept. Definitely like the concept. Yes, that's that. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. This this is kind of too fun. Yeah. So part clank the tree to get the par. Now you're thinking fourth dimensionally. Like the backgrounds mean nothing. The game is being played on those small spaces, but I like the I like the actual flow of it. It's an interesting visual flow, like just connecting signs. Have you never done that? Whenever you're actually out in public, like look at signs that actually just make a trade, like a chain from one to the other. The pedestrian. Okay, coming to PS4. So is it actually already out? Because I'd be interested in playing that already. Now let's take a look at two new games headed to PS5. We are the forest shadows. Ghosts running silently between the straight, cold lines of a corrupt state. Thief? They can't ration, manipulate. It's giving me such thief vibes. They've taken everything from those they claim to protect. This is another thief reboot? Authority and steel will not is it not stop. thief, it's thieves? We are an invading yep. army. We are race. Bypass defenses and strike at the heart. Ow!
That's some of those three very different methods of combat. Take back what was stolen. It's over. And the people call us heroes. From the day of night. To others, we are rivals. Thief guilds? Okay. So you're two squads of four? We are all outlaws. Good. Okay. Definitely getting vibes of a I was looking at that and going like, right, I, so each one of them is a character class, there's multiple groups of four, all trying to thieve from the same spot at the same time, so you can lay traps for each other. Not too sure how that'll play out, but, mm. Hey, Temtem! So this has actually been in early access on Steam for a while, a couple of friends of mine have actually uh, been telling me about it, but it definitely feels Pokemon-esque. Um... It feels like it's very much intending to be Pokemon, but with in a as an MMOS kind of like way. Where you're all playing your own adventure, but there's other players floating about. You can actually challenge or party with, but you're all making your own Poke journey. Or Temtem journey. And um, yeah, sure. I mean if, if it actually is balanced out and played well, we can actually see a proper big uh, RPG that the Pokemon games should have been. battles and shit. Now the, the problem that I seen with it was uh, stability and humblegames.com. So did Humble Let's take a tour buy Tim Tim? Or did you like a game there when they're published games? For this melee -focused action epic launching this holiday. Godfall. Really don't care about this. But we'll see. Well, about time, I suppose. <laughs> you see how the combat actually plays. Hello, my name is Keith Lee, and I am the game director for Godfall. On behalf of Counterplay Games, we are very excited to share gameplay with you today and to offer you a glimpse into the mystical world of Godfall. Today, uh. you'll be seeing extensive gameplay captured on a PlayStation 5 development kit. Please keep in mind that the game is still a work in progress, and some things may change for the final product as we continue to learn and harness the power of Sony's next generation console. Please enjoy. I mean, that really doesn't look like fun. So let's jump right into what Godfall is. Godfall is a looter slasher that features intense action, satisfying moment-to-moment -moment Looter combat, slasher. and robust loot progression systems. You can enjoy the game at your own pace, playing alone, or through online co-op with up to two additional teammates. So three man teams. Godfall is set in a brand new high fantasy universe filled with heroic knights, arcane magic, and forbidden realms. The world is split up into the elemental realms of earth, water, air, and fire. Godfall is a complete. I was gonna make a last album, the last Airbender joke, but are acquired or are not even interested in gameplay. There are no microtransactions, no waiting for content. It's all in the game on day one. As you adventure, you'll get to tear through enemies to challenge a mad god who awaits you at the top. Right. You play a Valorian knight. A godlike warrior able to equip valor plates, legendary armor sets that transform you into an unstoppable master of melee combat. Throughout your journey, you'll find ancient valor plates lost in time, each with their own characteristics and long history. Now let's talk about gameplay in Godfall. First, our team wanted to do something different. We wanted to combine action RPG loot progression with third-person melee combat to create what we think is a looter slasher. Our game is therefore one part gear-driven and one part player skill-driven. In other words, not only do we want you to find exquisite weapons with powerful loot traits, but we also want you to have that feeling of accomplishment 
for mastering the wide set of combat mechanics available to you in Godfall. From a combat philosophy perspective, the melee combat in Godfall is intended to be fluid, dynamic, and interactive, embracing offense. Then why am I not defense. seeing More anything other than one style of weapon? Enemies at the same time. As a result, you should always be moving and closing the gap on enemies. Also, you dominate the combat space, not the enemies, and the game rewards you for being aggressive. Now that you're familiar with the combat philosophy, yep. let's now take show me weapon, weapon classes. Because that's what's going to fundamentally change things. Godfall, Once you learn a weapon class, weapon then you're just worrying about numbers. The longsword, the dual blades, the polearm. One of these are going to be horribly broken. The two handed warhammer. The two handed great sword. And that's the one everybody's going to be playing as. Each weapon class has their own unique movesets and play styles, ranging from fast combos to more strategic, deliberate play. As you defeat enemies in your adventures, you will acquire numerous weapons for each weapon category, each weapon with their own primary okay. and secondary traits. Switching mid combat? We will I'm okay with this. Into the weapon classes and how to modify them in greater detail. For now, we'll go over the dual blades and the longsword weapon classes. The dual blades are the fastest weapon class in Godfall, embodying speed, fluidity, and mobility. The dual blades are exceptional against soft, unarmored targets or single targets. You can perform a combo by executing four consecutive light attacks. The dual blade's heavy attack is a spinning blade cyclone. The blade cyclone can also be used as a finisher at the end of your light attack combo. So what are the signature moves for the dual blades? As you build up charge, you can also activate inner focus, which is unique to the dual blades, which inflicts massive damage in a short period of time. There's also mortal coil, where you can throw your blade into an enemy, pulling the enemy towards you, like pulling a cable. Okay. Now let's switch to the longsword weapon class. Longswords are balanced weapons, embodying crisp damage and simple cooldowns without needing a lot of elaborate combo setups. Similar to dual blades, longswords have their own four hit light attack combo. Then there's the heavy attack finisher, which can be used at the end of your light attack combo. There are three signature moves for the longsword class. There's Spectral Flurry, which cannot be interrupted and deals high damage to multiple nearby targets. Then there's Spiral Technique, which eviscerates all enemies in a straight fixed path. Notice there's a white flash after a longsword swing called a timing attack. If you press the shield button exactly at the same time, you'll perform a devastating shield uppercut with your longsword. The shield is a core part of Godfall. It's available to you throughout the entire game. You can always block incoming attacks with your shield. If you press the shield button at the right time, you can also parry an attack. You can perform a light attack after a last second shield block to counter attack with a powerful shield strike. The shield is great not just for defense, but also offense. You can aim and throw your shield, which will hit multiple nearby targets. If you tap the shield button... I've got a wild feeling that essentially the gameplay will become around the parry attack. and shield attacks, not the actual weapons and gear you, you have. double tap the shield button to petrify enemies. Because it'll be damage non-dependent on your weapon you gear, so at least the early game would be actually just parrying, learning to parry everything and you parry everything, the then... Whoopsie, whoopsie, take everything out in a crowd. Oh, that's a survival tactic more than anything else. Or rather than actually, like, main gameplay. Because they'll become unblockables, obviously. Dude's so slow, why are you not just tanking and spanking? Get around behind him and start hitting him in the arse. Use your 
your strike through and attack him from behind. No? Wait, so like whenever you watch bosses and then seeing people just kind of like purposefully like drawing this out. The thing is, they're chatting about how, how action-oriented it is. The combat doesn't feel. We also want to thank all the fans for the endless but... support since our initial reveal back in December. I'm sure there's uh, there's people who are like so excited for this, but such as details on loot, yeah. and progression, and are eager. It ain't got me. With you on our way to launch Definitely ain't got me season. on the hype train. Hope that you will join our Godfall community on Twitter. But, um, Facebook, yeah, good luck with the the Godfall developers. It looks like a, a very high, a high commitment game, which is going to be uh, big for people who are really into the uh, fantasy action and combat, and the looter, the looter slasher genre is rife for picking because uh, of the fact station. they've already killed the looter shooter <laughs> with too many. Um... Oh god, I can't even remember what the name of the game is. Oh, there's been like three... Borderlands! Jesus! For some reason I couldn't remember Borderlands' name. Was that it? Godfall was the last one? Well, shit. Okay, that was, um... Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen. State of play. There was actually some interesting shit in there. But, um... Some stuff that I wasn't actually all that interested in either. So let's 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 go back here. We bit. let's let's go back and take a look at some of the stuff that actually was of interest. Um, jump back to the beginning of it here. So state of play, obviously had a couple of games that actually jumped out at me. Well, I'll just bring down the volume on it here, and we'll actually just jump across to a couple of things that are actually of interest. So obviously we've got uh, Crash. It's about time. Um, a, a new Crash game, we're delighted to see it, um, a great platformer series that uh, got a really good uh, remaster there not that long ago, so getting the next game in the series out was a no-brainer, uh, allowing you to play as Coco, having a lot of like unlockables in-game, and having that um, multi- like a multiplay or like a repeated play of different levels with different visual styles and little kind of like um, tweaks to the gameplay, like a slowing it down, or um, increasing the speed with the overcranked camera, or uh, making it play like they're underwater, so the physics is a little bit fucked up. Like all those little kind of like tweaks and tools are a great idea, especially if you unlock that as a tool for multiple levels after completing the level that is assigned to, because that'll actually keep people coming back again and again and again. And I'm completely on board with that. Fair play. Having multiple playable characters, uh, even if it is just for a small moment where you play as Cortex or you play as the Gator, and then being able to play the whole story as Coco, um, happy days. Um, I would actually, that's the thing. If I play, if I if I went to bother playing this, if I went and played uh, Crash Four, is this considered Crash Four? Because I remember being a trilogy and then this. Um, playing this Crash game, I'd rather play through it as Coco, just because I can. It's a, the option is there, so why wouldn't I? Especially if it's a uh, gameplay wise, she has no real disadvantages to doing so. She plays exactly like Crash. Um, new mechanics for actually getting around the levels. Cool. Uh, the, uh, the the multiple masks, the way they're used, uh, reminds me a lot of um, a very Mega Man esque kind of like you need the tool for that particular area. I remember there being a great <laughs> Super Nintendo game or NES game that was actually like a platformer shooter that had that gravity inversion mechanic where you had to walk on the roof to get through certain levels. I know there's a couple of different YouTubers that have actually played that game uh, online before. The multiple costumes, I think you can actually see at the moment, which are, they did specifically state are not, um, they're not related to microtransactions or anything. They're just like level unlocks. Fair play. There's a lot to love about the this crash, a new crash game, and especially whenever this seems to be made with a lot of care and concern to actually try and include a lot of the Charm of the original games, uh, play like the most recent remasters, and add something new to every single level in multiple ways. Top notch. So like this is gonna be this is gonna this is gonna be a big thing. Um, I know that it's been long announced and we've actually seen it sitting in the marketplace for like pre-order, but seeing that actually in action, definitely an enjoyable experience. To actually, like uh, look forward to. 
you want to find the next game? Hitman 3. Um, this was a nice surprise. Uh, Hitman 2 Seasons was actually uh, very well received by a lot of people. I've never, I've never been a massive Hitman, Hitman player. I've, just, I've enjoyed watching other people play it. But I'd be more intrigued to play this now because of the VR. <laughs> they're going through and actually being an assassin in first person perspective. I'm just, I'm terrified of the fact that they're probably going to make you like actually move. Like, so like you bring up your hand with the weapon and then you bring up your other hand and you're like, okay, I'll know. And I'm just going to put this around this guy's neck <laughs> and you actually have to pull it back. Um, I'm sure it's not going to be that particularly precise. It'll be just like control sticks and actually like press a button to activate to do your do your thing. Um, I wonder if it actually the entirety of the game will actually be playable like this, or if it actually be enjoyable to play like this. But at least it's it's something that people have wanted for a very very long time. Um, the evil psychopaths among them. <laughs> but conceptually, I'm on board with this. Uh, just being able to play VR Hitman Agent for Agent Forty Seven is going to be you. Play the entire world of Assassination Trilogy. The whole... Oh, wow! I just didn't catch that until the last minute. All of the hit, Hitman games are adding that to the past Hitman games as well. That is very, very smart. The next game up was actually Braid. Uh, Braid Anniversary Edition. Where I, I honestly... I remember whenever they did the documentary for uh, Super Meat Boy and for Braid... I remember the guy being very, very kind of like disenchanted with the game industry itself the guy that was behind the Braid uh, release, and the fact that they come back and actually take Taken Braid and turned it into a uh, anniversary edition for modern consoles, modern designs, and can be played by modern people, while adding a extensive game design tutorial and commentary track to it, where it's actually you're delineating it down by specifically the puzzle design, the audio design, whatever else, have multiple audio tracks. An amazing teaching tool, a great design tool, and I hope it for the best, actually, that people really get on board with it. Because Braid, <laughs> like the, the way people reacted to Braid was unexpected and probably disappointed the expectations of the original creator. But it's it's a beautiful game. It was very well done. And I hope uh, that uh, people appreciate the anniversary release. And it's not just in educational circles that people appreciate Braid for what it was. Right, let's jump on to the next thing. The Pathless has me super excited. There seem to be, like, do you know whenever you actually feel like there's, like, after a game comes out, a number of other games kind of, like, start to fill in the gaps of what that game might have been missing. And a lot of games are doing this big open space that actually feels like it's Breath of the Wild whenever you just look at just where the, the design and the ambiance of it. But this is very much um, Princess Mononoke <laughs> Journey. Breath of the Wild and Shadow of the Colossus rolled into another game. The traversal, the movement, the uh, the way to go through the world feels very Journey-esque. It feels like there's a flow to the way you should be playing it. While um, the concept and the experience seems actually like borrow itself from Princess Mononoke or the or Shadow of the Colossus. Where these, these great beasts that are actually here and they're corrupted. And you're either trying to, trying to heal the beasts or destroy the beasts. And... Being able to actually like take that and then have the journey kind of experience of finding a place, finding a puzzle world, finding a dungeon, working your way through it, and then actually at the end having your great beast battle at the end. Yes, I'm on board with this. Even if like the 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 uh, angst of actually getting into a location and there being the beast there at that time and having to actually like be quiet, don't move, don't get caught, and the um the use of uh the wide open space and your pet eagle to specifically get you to traverse and actually be able to be over the top of this world, to be watching it from above. And then, of course, you get to pet him. You get to pet the your flying doggo. And it's like, it does appear to be touchpad. You're actually using different locations. Like, that's, like, <laughs> like that's so cute. <laughs> that's fucking beautiful. But, um, yeah, uh, this is actually a game that's going to be making it onto my list of ones I really want to be looking forward to checking out. Why not? It's a, it is proper, proper Zelda boss battles. Um, a little update from Blitworks on Spelunky 2. Um, I played a fair bit of Spelunky online. Uh, I never got into Spelunky originally, but uh, I played Spelunky online because it was a free-to-play game that was available on um, my PlayStation. 
And whenever I played it, I got a. L I realized it was like I'm gonna have. I can't do not have. The, I do not have the time or commitment to enjoy this the way some people would. But I know that this will just invest people's entire days and their entire gameplay experiences for a long period of time. Um, Splunky looks fantastic. It hasn't looked any better than it has in the past. It just they nailed it, and it's a second one of it, and it's going to be much more expansive, and people are going to really enjoy it. Not for me, but it's a whole new Splunky world. Um, Literally, Spunky World. That was the name of the online, as far as I can remember. Right, Genshin, the, this, this game... Oh, I don't know what it is, but this game intrigues me far too much because there's little bits of this that I'm going, mm-hmm, you just ripped that the fuck off, didn't you? And then it actually goes, like, we're doing something different with it. The... I'm looking at this and I feel like I'm looking at caravan stories by way of like anime Blade Souls by way of Breath of the Wild. And there's parts of this which feel like this is a single player game experience. And then it becomes like a three man battle team. And then I'm like, wait, is this a JRPG? Is this an online RPG? Is this an action online RPG? Is, 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 is this essentially, um, what was that? Um, medieval fantasy girls one because this is this is waifu breath of the wild with some fucking lunacy going on here i want to know more about the story i'm going to look more into genshin i want to actually like follow up on this this is a game again is tickling my weebiness and i want to know more about it because the the fights and stuff feel a bit fantasy starish as well i mean like it's like, like the cut scene that they show at the beginning of fantasy star online for the uh their online game kind of looks like this in a lot of ways and the fact that it shows like the perspective being like from an individual player's perspective but showing three players playing together i don't know if that's one person controlling three but genshin impact is something that i really want to know more about The next game popping up from Focus Interactive is Aeon Must Die, and I kind of don't know what I feel about it because it and another game kind of strike two little points in the back of my head. Uh, I do like my scrolling beat em ups in a lot of ways, and uh, the scroll and action platformers I've played that have been very, very direct and simple experiences have made me want to actually play more of them. And somehow it feels like it's like, exploratory while also being. An extremely uh, action-oriented adventure, and I want to, I want to, I want to figure out why the combat looks so badass, and I want to know if this is actually like a static fighter or if this is actually like a place that you're exploring in one or three, because it does feel like we're it's cutscene, cutscene, and then we're seeing like a room of people fighting, and I could stand no more, but it's just oozes style. It almost die just looks gorgeous. It's like. Giver with like I don't know I'm trying to think of like a good description. Giver with a like bug theme or a monster theme, a technological organic theme, and it feels like it's something that should have actually been like from a, a 1990s 2000 AD comic, but animified. And I'm on board for this. I want to know more. I want to see some from the A almost die. I'll be keeping an eye on this game until it gets released um, in 2021. So we're gonna see more about that. The next game up was the auto, uh, what was it? Mutation? Mutation? Ano Mutation. Yeah. So, weirdly, um, I first thought, I was looking Far Lone Seals with like the opening shot whenever it was actually sitting on the boat, but it becomes obviously like exploration through like super futuristic uh, Tokyo cities, like in a 2.5D perspective where you're running towards camera and away from camera and alongside camera. And then it becomes like a platforming action game. And, I'm wanting to, I want to see this world. This is a big, exploratory, interesting world. Uh, I don't know if it's like Mark of the Ninja or Icy or something else that actually kind of has that feel. But some parts of it look very, very clean, and other parts of it look extremely like pixel arty. And I don't know which one is actually the majority of the game because the combat and the platforming feels like it's actually got that kind of pixel art style. Well, the intro -y bits seem to be very, very CG, and I don't know if that's actually like the story cutscenes or if the game is actually going to be playing more of the, the pixelated side. So I'd like to see more about this to find out actually how it works out. But either way, it's a stunning looking game. And um, maybe may, maybe this will be one of the games I'll actually be excited about. 
whenever launch on the PS5 and stuff comes out, it'll be like this year's contrast. Bug snacks. We saw more about bug snacks. Um, obviously, bug snacks is actually was like a standout thing from the last game because it's just weird as balls. But what we figured out from it was actually that you're playing as a journalist who's investigating the place that actually has been the bug snacks town, and you're being asked to do a bunch of simple little tasks like to help bring the city back together. You're hunting bug snacks. You're actually capturing bug snacks. You're trying to treat bug snacks tra correctly, and obviously there's some dark overtones because there's like a whole like the same as the last one. It's like the very end it just goes like. And there's weirdness. I'm like, yeah, the whole thing is weird. But like, why do you have to put the dark tone on top of it? It's Viva Pinata with some surreal backstory that actually is meant to go horribly wrong. Um, all the creatures in it, obviously, like they they're they're made cute and cuddly, but there's something something very disturbing about this entire island, and we're going to find out more about it. So um, yeah, Bug Snacks has. Uh, plenty of growth in its story it's just going to be one of those ones that'll just grow on us as as the weirdness actually increases lightsaber doodles on playstation vr um <laughs> like i mean if, if you didn't if, if there wasn't a lightsaber game for vr then we'd all be disappointed but in this you see a lot a bunch of different VR lightsabers you see a lot of like a uh, storyline to it so it's not just kind of like static but I would like to know more about this rather than it be. It feels like an experience and not a actual game yet. It feels like you're just doing a lot of like uh, simple repetitive actions. But it'll actually be funky as fuck to be in for like 15, 20 months at a time. Don't I'm not expecting a lot, but I'm expecting uh, at least a kind of like like so they expect it to be a little bit closer to Beat Saber than it's actually going to be to a full on adventure like maybe like the that last Star Wars um, Dragon the Dark Souls game was. <clears throat> not really going to talk about control because it's just an it's an expansion pack that was announced. Not going to talk about auto chess because auto chess is fucking auto chess. The uh, pedestrian pedestrian's game style looks really really interesting just for the fact that it actually is a um, it's a it's a puzzle it's a puzzle game where you're actually like moving objects around in a in a world that actually is not. <laughs> like your platforms in the world you're playing aren't related to the backgrounds the backgrounds are just pretty shit that's going to be going on in the background distracting you while the rest of it is actually literally going to be the gameplay and i like the fact that it actually is movable puzzle rooms rather than actually just you trying to but it's not um it's not a piping game it's not where you actually just pipe the things to each other there's something to be solved and then you can then link the objects together um it'll be fun to see especially if um the game actually has uh, a massive amount of levels if it's like one of those things where it's like a couple of small chapters, it'll be a fun distraction. If it's like a big, big thing, there's actually a lot, well, not a big, big thing, but a big, big amount of levels in it, it'll be something that people will actually enjoy. And I think it's again going to be um, a PS4, PS5, kind of like early days of PS5 game that people are going to play while they're waiting for another big title to come out. Hoods, um, not much I can really think about in this, other than it's going to be squad-based. Each one of them have individual classes. Uh, you're going to have multiplayer, and you're essentially going to be hunting after the same prize, and you're all going to murder each other. This feels like it's a Ubisoft game. It feels like it should be a Ubisoft game. I don't know why, but it's actually like it, it just seems to have that intent behind it, but Focus Interactive, obviously, behind this one, and uh, it's going to be bloody. It's going to be gory, but I'm not too excited about Outlaws and Legends. Temtem's making it to the PlayStation. Um, it, it, we need a, we actually need an alternate to Pokemon. We really do. We need, a, and I want Temtem to be successful. Um, there's been a lot of news about it since its early access release on Steam. Um, if you want to know more about it, you can just go and play it right now. Not much else to really say. Right. that's the whole thing finished guys thank you very much for actually watching um i think i've gone through each one of those uh that was actually just all kind of like another look at it just to kind of share with the editor uh so whenever he goes to actually look at this afterwards we can try and cut this down into like a couple of segments but well that was actually a very surprising state of play hopefully uh we'll actually get to enjoy more 
uh, stuff released and coming close to the PS5's release. But that was actually an enjoyable third-party look at a couple of games I had never heard of and a couple of games I was actually excited to see more about. So hopefully uh, we'll get an update on that, obviously, in the future. And the PlayStation 5, they'll give some big details about the hardware, pricing, release dates, and all that kind of stuff in the near future. But... um. The future's looking bright for Sony. Like they're, 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 not, they're not for a lack of games that they're going to be releasing, but a lot of those games are probably going to be on PC as well. So look for them on the Steam store. Get them pre-ordered because uh, they're going to be fun no matter what platform they're on. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see all you dudes in the next video. Bye. Oh!